First Chronicles 28 chapter. Verses 1 through 4. And for everyone to read 1 through 4, I'm just going to read verse 3. chapter 28. The word reads, But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. And the subject is simply, when God says no. When God says no. Let's pray. Lord, we open up ourselves to you today, Lord, as we open up ourselves to you. May your spirit descend upon each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to give us, Lord, what we're going to learn today, Father, so that we can be stronger people for you. Thank you how you're going to bless, how you're going to heal, Father, and how you're going to deliver in this moment, Father, as we listen to your word. So we give you praise and glory, Father, and we just ask that you will self out of the way, that you will come shining through as a ray of light. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. And verse 3 again says, But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. When God says no. Now no is a word we hate to hear. Nobody likes to hear no. No is a word that we hate to hear, used on us. But we don't mind so much if somebody uses it on somebody else. But we don't like to hear it on us. No is a word on many occasions when it is used, we think it's funny. As long as, as it is not directed to us. I mean, we hear kids say no all the time. When they say no, no, we, we laugh. We think it's funny as long as it's not used on us. No is a word that causes us sometimes to go into instant rebellion. Because if you have been a child growing up in any turn of house and they told you no. You found a way to get around that no. If they said no, you couldn't go outside, you went out the window. You did something, but no, you went into instant rebellion mode. How am I going to get out of this no that I've heard? You know, no is a word that makes toddlers cry. Because if you tell no to a toddler, a toddler will cry. No is a word that makes adults cry. Yeah. Because if they hadn't fixed it as a toddler, they're going to grow up as an adult. And if you say no to them, they're going to whine too. Yeah. You know, because adults don't like to be told no either. Because they hadn't fixed it. No is a word that God uses really to test our obedience. Mm. How obedient are we to God when God tells us no? We just, seen, we just read in Chronicles where they wanted to build a temple for the Lord to place the Ark of the Covenant for God. And God told him, no, you can't do it. I'm sure David said, God, I'm doing this for you, but God said no. Now David could have forced it and did it, but if you forced it against God's will, what do you have? So, no is a word that God uses really to test our obedience. So what do we do when God says no? And let me let, me let you in on a secret. God will say no to you. He's going to say no to you in your lifetime. And he's going to say no, and he's going to stick to it. He's going to say no, and no is not going to mean not yet. Sometimes he says no, and no means no. Not now. Not, not, not now, because sometimes we think when God says no, well, it's not the time of life. No, sometimes when he says no, it means no. So what do we do when God says no? For David, 
had, and look at what David had done. If we read the whole Chronicles letter, I mean, letter that um, scripture lesson. David had called together all the princes, all the tribes, all the captains, all the leadership of the nation. David had called them all together. And he called them all together and made a speech that took the courage of a leader. And the speech that took the courage of a leader for David is he told them that I wanted to build this thing for the Lord and God told me no. Now that took a whole lot. And God told him what? Well. But anyway, David was saying, I had in my heart to build a house to rest the ark of the covenant for God. I had in my heart to do this, but God told me no. And I was ready to build it. But again, God told him no. God told him no. So what do we do when God tells us no? Thou shalt not build a house for my name. That's what he told David. And sometimes he tells us no too. And for some folks, if you say no to them, you need to get ready to fight. You need to get ready to fight. Because if you say no to them, it's like, they said no to me. You know, like, I mean, when, when do you go in life where everybody's going to say yes to you? But if you say no to them, especially saints sometimes, you say no to them, they, they get up and off, they get everybody else up and off because you said no. And adults that can't handle no, they can't handle no when they were the kids. And a kid that can't handle no and they keep, keep giving it to them and pass the time, they grow up to be spoiled brats. And if they grow up to be a spoiled brat, an adult grow up to be a spoiled brat adult. Because your daddy learned how to handle no. Because God will say no. But some people you just can't say no to. If you say no, you, you might go to your fight. Somebody need to say amen. So, for some folks, you don't say no to them. Because if you say no, the fight is on. But in David's case, he heard no. But he also noted what God had done in his life. Because see, when God says no, it's for a reason. When we are told no, it's for a reason. When your parents told you no, it was for a reason. Your parents didn't say no because they were trying to spoil your fun. They were doing it for a reason that you could not see why they were saying no. The only we saw most of the time was when my parents said no, I'm going to do it anyway. Because they tried to spoil my fun, I already made arrangements, and if they told me no, I'm going to get around this no. But when God tells us no, it's for a reason. It's not to spoil our fun or hurt us. It's for our protection. But people that don't know how to handle it, they don't care if it's their, for their protection or not. What they hear is no, and I can't get my way, so I'm going to tear this place up until I get my way. Amen. It's just as simple as that. Because they haven't learned how to handle no. Some people can't handle no today. You say no to them right now, you might as well get ready to fight the science word, because they ain't going to handle it. <laughs> Am I right? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those guys can hear. <laughs> the Lord has chosen him in his life. Look, look at what the Lord did, because David recognized something. The Lord has chosen him out of his father's house to be king of Israel. Now God told him, no, but David had to think, what has the Lord done for me in my life? So he had chosen him out of his father's house to be king of Israel. You know, because God did uh, three things that we need to really take note of today. First of all, you, we need to figure out why did God say no today? That, that's first. Second of all, what has God done for you? And third of all, what legacy would we like to leave? See, when David heard the no, you know, David had to think on these three things. And when we hear no from God or hear no, even from our parents or somebody, we need to think about, you know, why did they say no to us? You know, they didn't say no to uh, people don't say no because they just don't like you most of the time. It says no for your protection or, you know, you're not ready to handle that or, uh, again, maybe you'll never be able to handle that so no means no. But when somebody says no, most of the time it's for our protection, that's why I've heard. Uh-huh. You know, as I grew in um, Christian spirituality and um, Christian maturity, I, I learned this. When somebody told me no, I, I, fine, I can do something else. I don't have to do that. That's one thing I don't have to do. But sometimes if when people have learned that, they say no to me. No, I got it. It's on. So I got to get my people together so we can fight this no. So, three things went through this no. Why did they say no? 
What has God done for you and what legacy would you like to leave behind? Now, most times people say no. First thing they um, say is they got two statements. When we hear no, first statement is they won't let me do nothing. When somebody says they won't let me do nothing, they just trying to, or the second statement is I can't do anything. And people say these statements when they hear no, and both of these statements are true. But when God says no, when we hear God says no, again, we need to consider these three things. Because God is telling us no for a reason. First one is, why did God say no? Why did God say no? Why did he say no? David was a man that loved the Lord. We know David loved the Lord. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, and David loved the Lord. So why did God say no to this man that was a man after his own heart, and he loved the Lord? You know, David's past at this point when he was trying to build this temple caught up with him. His past caught up with him, and God told David that you have blood on your hands, for you are a man of war. He had blood on his hands being a man of war, and not only a man of war, he had blood on his hands from his personal life. From his personal life, because we know David had a rough personal life also. So God said, I'm not going to allow you to build this temple, so this is why I'm saying no to you. God just don't say no and leave it. God says no and gives us a reason why he says no. Now it's up to us if we want to accept the reason God gave us or not. But we need to realize that when God says no, it's for a reason. You know, my parents had eight kids and my father had one car. And sometimes the sibling wanted to use the car. And God, my father would say, my earthly father would say, no, you can't use the car. And if I had a hard-headed sibling, which I did have at least one or two, they would take the car anyway. And they would go out and they would crash the car. And they would understand that my father didn't say no because he didn't want them to spoil their fun. They weren't ready to ride on the street. But they wrecked the car, and you know, God was blessed and spared their life. But my father wasn't trying to spoil their fun. He just didn't want them to crash the car. And when God says no to us, he's not trying to spoil our fun either. He just don't want us to wreck our lives. He doesn't want us to run our lives into war. And David had to know when God said, no, look, you, made a, you are a man of war. You made a mess of your personal life. I still love you. You're a man after my own heart because he's a forgiving God. But I'm not going to allow you to build this um, ark or this temple for this ark. And so I'm telling you right now, no. But I will allow your family lineage to continue. But you won't do it. So David had to accept that. Now again, he could have not accepted that and forced it. But if you force it against God, who's going to win? So when God says no, it's for a reason. And we got to figure out why did he say no. And for David, it was because of he had blood on his hands from war and from his personal life. The second one is we need to consider what has God done for you? Because a lot of times when God tells us no, we think God hasn't done a thing. He said no to this, God hasn't done nothing for me. All over one no. God has blessed you with the house, food in your refrigerator, a good job. He, he gave you just about anything, a nice vacation, a great family. And when God says no, he don't do nothing for me. If you woke up this morning, he done enough for you. So, God, what has God done for you? When he tells you no, he's not trying to hurt you. We forget about what God has done for us when we hear one no. People do that too. You tell somebody one no, man, you had more. And you could have blessed them, you could have loaned them a thousand dollars. They don't care, you said no this time. Go ahead. You give somebody a thousand dollars, then all of a sudden you don't have a ten spot, and you ask them for a ten, and then you don't have it. They'll forget about the thousand just because you said no about the ten. And then they'll come back and say, they don't give me nothing. And then you got to try to cover the trap when somebody say, well, they said you don't give them nothing. I just gave them $1,000. They didn't even pay me back yet. <laughs> so we need to say, we need to figure out what has God done for you? Because when God bless you, we need to work on that and we need to figure that out in our lives because God has blessed us. God gave us Jesus Christ. And I tell you, he gave us Jesus Christ for the remission and for the covering of our sins. And that is enough right there to get us the glory so we should be thankful. So if God, you tell me no every now and then, I can take it because you gave me a big yes. And my big yes, I wait to know that you give me right now. My big yes is I can go from here to glory, rise on Jesus Christ because his blood had covered me. So I can take it no because you gave me the yes. And too many times we all upset because God said no. But somebody said no, we try to tear the house down. Don't take your salvation and throw it out. 
out the window. You need, we need to realize what has God done for you. So God gave us Jesus Christ, and everybody knows that he is the foundation of our whole life. So if God says no, think about what he's done for you. Because what he's done for you want to outweigh the no that you need. And last, we need to consider, what legacy will you leave? We all will leave a legacy. We all will leave a legacy. The question is, what kind? You know, we're going to leave a legacy that people will remember and talk about, or we're going to leave a legacy and people will say, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> That's a legacy too. I'm glad they're gone. And you know, some people say, I'm glad they died. They come to the funeral, they cry, I'm glad they're gone. Because they were a pain in the neck. <laughs> all they did was fuss, all they did was fight, they couldn't say no to them. Every time they said no, it always turned out to me. So I'm glad they're gone. That's a legacy, isn't it? Yeah. So the, the question isn't, what legacy is, what kind of legacy? The question is, is legacy, we want to leave a legacy. So how do you want to be remembered? See, if we don't learn how to handle the nose of life, we're going to be remembered poorly. Because that spoiled that spoil, um, spoil breath syndrome is going to grow into an adult. And we don't call it the same thing, but that's what they are, spoiled breath adults. And people will remember that. They will remember that you were just a mean, irritable old drought. That, that you always came with negative stuff. Every time somebody say, let's do this, you always talking negative. People remember that stuff. And when you die, they're going to cry when you leave, and they're going to thank God when you go. Amen. 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 So, you know, we need to remember. We need to remember that we're going to leave a legacy. And until we learn how to handle the no, the next legacy is going to be bad. The legacy is going to be bad. Because nobody tells you no or reason. And you know, I'm talking about God, I'm talking about God. Now let's talk about when somebody tells you no in the church. A choir director, yeah? He said, no, we can't do this song. Oh, okay. You better get ready to have no members the next time you have choir girls. All because he said, no, we can't do this song. It may be that you don't have the voices to do the song. Or man, you say, well, we can't do that song because you can't get the rhythm. Well, why can't you? He's told you, you can't do the rhythm. <laughs> so what you getting mad for? You can't do it, you just can't do it. When you can do it, he will say, yes, you can do it. Amen? Amen. Or I ain't going to usher today. Why? Because I ain't, I'm not going to wear a different color. <laughs> well, if the usher president says we're going to do it this way, what is your fight? The point is, now what they said is you can't be said no to. I gotta have my way. If I don't have my way, I'm turning this joint out. And growing up, they got like that. Again, they had to learn that as a little child. You find that they never had a way. I, I went to the store the other day, seen a little kid. He had um, one of those Star Wars ice agents going down the aisle. Just wait. And the mother going, oh, Stop it, stop it. Oh, stop it, come on. You, you may hurt somebody. I stood there and let that kid hit me. I'm going to smack the wound up. I'm going to give him one. And just, just as he got to me, I looked at him and he, he stopped. And then he backed up. And then he went to his mother. Now I'm probably looking for sniping for real, but I did get my eye. Hey. But if she doesn't correct that, if she doesn't correct that, you already know the rest of it. If you don't correct that then, it's going to get worse later. So, you know, we need to learn how to handle the no's in life. And as adults, if we haven't learned how to handle it, you need to learn how to handle it now. Because God's going to detail you, know, you're going to run into somebody on this planet that's going to say no to you. You're going to run into somebody that's going to say, how do you handle it? I mean, no's out here to hurt us, and God is definitely not trying to hurt us. So, what kind of legacy do we want to leave? You know, I don't want to leave a bad legacy. You know, I don't want to leave a poor legacy. I want to leave a good legacy. I want to learn how to handle, you know, nose in my life. So I won't be a negative person. Because people that can't handle nose, they are very negative. Yeah. We, we may think them, but 
they are very negative. And if you don't believe me, try to say no to somebody today. That you already know you're going to be, it's going to be a fight. Because some people, we just say yes to just to pacify them so they won't say nothing. And that puts you in bondage. Because then you got to do everything they want so they just be quiet. Some people, we go home at night. I don't care what they do. I just want peace. So whatever they do is all right with me. I just want them to be quiet. But do you have peace? Then you're in the hospital with ulcers and taking all these pills because you got all this stuff built up inside because you all upset. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, I just want you to understand where I'm coming from because David had to deal with this stuff. David, God's own man, a man after God's own heart. I'm building this for you, Lord. I'm building this for you. And God knew that he would, but God said, no. Amen. You can't do it. And David had to tell all his people that. That took courage to believe Because when somebody tells you, no, it takes courage to go and act on a no. Say, well, I, if I can't do it, I just can't do it. You know, the bishop come to me one day and say, look, I don't want you to go to county, I want you to go someplace else. I can't stand on the floor and fight the bishop. I did when I was at my last appointment. Wherever he said go, I made a promise on my knees to God. And to this church, I will go where I'm sitting. So to say, no, I'm being rebellious, I, I may come back, but I will be in total rebellion, and I wouldn't be no good to myself, and I wouldn't be no good to anybody's church. Amen. Until I learn how to handle it. And we got preachers around that do that. That they aren't good to anybody because they don't I ain't going, I don't want to go nowhere. And they reject it. And then they go back. And they wonder why God's not flourishing, diminishing. God keeps us going because of his grace and mercy, but he won't pour out his abundance until we're obedient. Amen. So as we learn how to deal with this no, he's going to bless us because we're going to get those in our life again. But as we hear them, we need to know how to handle them. Amen. And knowing how to handle them is knowing what has God done for you already. Because when you think about it, you can handle them. Though. You can handle enough. You can handle them. Though. Yeah. And you think about everything that God's done for you. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, this is in a hoop. But this is one that's going to bless you. And it's going to help you bless somebody else. Because, and I, I'm saying right now, don't reject this message. Don't reject this message because now you're hurt. Because you're going to hear no. You're going, from somebody in your life. You're going to hear no from God. But when you hear no from God, just think about everything that he's done. Don't worry about it. No means no. But he will set another path and give you another mission. But in order for him to give you another mission, you need to handle this one. If David didn't handle this note, the lineage in this line would have been broken. Because God doesn't have to, he didn't have to keep going that way and make Solomon, because Solomon, David's son, he's the one that built the temple to put the ark in. So God kept it in his lips. God didn't have to do that, but he did it because David handled the note. Now, as we don't handle the note, we may break something for our children. They're, they're supposed to be blessed. But because we can't handle it, God will take that blessing that's supposed to be our children and we just derail it. So we need to handle it. So when God says no, don't sweat it. Or when you hear no in your life, don't sweat it. Believe me, when we're in Jesus, he has another plan because he's already blessed you so far and so much that it is unthinkable. You can't even think of all the ways Jesus blessed you. But when you do hear no, know that you're still blessed. Okay? You need to understand that you're still blessed when you hear no. So don't let it throw you. Because too many times people are thrown because of that. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, somebody just needs to say, Amen. Amen.